G'day everyone, welcome to Part-Time Warlords, new show dedicated to Ninth Age Fantasy. My name is Chris and I'm joined by Hugo and Alex today and this is the first episode in hopefully a bit of a series where we get to, well, basically talk and talk and talk and talk and promote Ninth Age as much as we can in Australia. Uh, we're going to be talking about events, armies, hobby, a bunch of different stuff. We are New South Wales or Sydney based guys um, and We've got quite a small community, so we really want to kind of build this up, give everyone something to uh, listen to, get a lot of guests on, because there are some awesome people out there who love talking Ninth Age, and we want to talk to them. And better um, yeah, better players than us, yeah, that as well. Um, so yeah, we want to basically do a bit of promotion, get our awesome tabletop game out there, and um, if you've got no idea what Ninth Age is, of course, go to the website, ninthage.com. Um, a lot of the Australian events are posted up on the, the Wargamer AU forum, and you'll look for Ninth Age events on there as well. So, um, yeah, we'll add links in. We'll do all that. I'll put this on the Facebook page for Ninth Age as an official page, and we'll put this on the Wargamer forum as well. Um, we are going to be releasing a video show and an audio show, and, um, yeah, we'll see how we go. It's our first go at it, but we're going to give it a good go. And like I said, my name's Chris. I'm Christoph on the forums. Not super active on there, but I do have a read of just about everything. Pretty active as well. I've um, been playing quite a while, obviously, since Ninth Age started. Only been a little hard back in 8th edition fantasy as well. Um, we are the part-time warlords, so it's not just me. We've got Hugo here. Hugo, say hi. Hello, hello. Um, so I'm Hugo. Uh, you can find me on Wargamer AU or Ninth Age under the name Kira here. Uh, I'm currently the Dread Elf Army Community Support. Uh, and yeah, I play a bunch of armies, as you can see there. And um, I'll, I'll give Sorens a go soon. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, we've got, we've, got a really, we've got a very interesting guest here today with us tonight. Uh, Alex, you want to tell people about yourself? Hey, you going? I'm Alex. I, uh, I'm the only person in the country that is the best at two armies. So, that's Empire and Demons. Also dabble in ogres here and there. It's no bragging at all. Not, not at all. I am too humble to brag. <laughs> <laughs> but ogres at the moment. Ogres, ogres for now. Bringing, bringing ogres to this one. We'll see how they go. It won't yeah, be good. He's gonna, he's, he wants a third. He wants best in race in ogres as well, this guy. Gotta move one up. Because <laughs> two is not all. enough. Two then is not enough. Uh, all um, right. So I think we'll talk about our first event this weekend, uh, which is wargaming on the actual balcony, and that'll be hosted at my house on an actual balcony. It's a pretty big balcony. Uh, we've got thirteen players so far, and look, let's hope it doesn't rain. That's uh, all he's gonna say. Yeah. Yeah, let's hope it doesn't rain. Cause it is yeah, we've, we've played it. We've played at your house before. It's 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 a great spot. Hugo's going to cook for everyone. Yes, 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 yes. And you can drink because drinking is the most important thing about tournaments. Because you can't drink at game stores. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. Um, so um, you got to be drinking to play some of those other games. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, dive in. We'll just go through some lists. Uh, so we, we want to just, you know, kind of quickly go through the list, give a little commentary and hopefully Alex, our guest can, uh, share in some insight of how he's going to play his army. So then we all know how to beat it. Cause that's very important. <laughs> it's not going to take a lot. Let me tell you. It is. All ogres. right. <laughs> <laughs> so you will, you will see Hugo's list. You will see Alex's list. You won't see mine this time. I'm going to be. Um, but I probably would have bought some annoying dwarves, maybe even infernal dwarves, just to annoy some people. Very um, annoying. yeah, pretty annoying. Um, excellent. So I'm gonna kind of summarize the lists a bit. We're gonna kick it off with warriors. So we've got two warriors this year. The first one is from Scotty Thompson. Now, Scotty, we don't know why we call him Two Shins. We'll find out at some point. Um, but Scotty is bringing three characters. He's got Chosen Lord, Sorcerer, and a Doom Lord. Now he's He's basically got the entropic aura on the chosen on a horse. He's going to go in a big unit of 10 nine, And he's got a source. He's going to sit. The ledger of souls to kind of soak the juicy veil tokens. And now he's got the Doom Lord. Now, the Doom Lord's pretty nice. He's got a few upgrades 
as of the last iteration. And he's going to have, I think, what a one-up re-rollable. That's um, pretty good. He's got his halberd as well, so he gets that shield, spike shield, obviously. Um, and that's, yeah, no, they're pretty good. They're pretty points. He's got 24 warriors with great weapons and the zealots banner, because why not? Just, um, some barbs for a bunker. He's got six Forsworn and seven Forsworn, both kitted out the same way with spike shields, musicians, and champions. And um, like I mentioned, the Warrior Knights, but three times five, three units of five flayers with shields and bows. Because, you know, really 15 bows, 15 bows. But yes, excellent. Chaff very far. So, um, yeah, first list, pretty um, straightforward. What do you reckon, Hugo? Uh, I reckon I reckon Doom Lord. I think he needs another Doom Lord. I, I don't know about the Chaos Lord. I think the Doom Lord is kind of like really underrated. Um, and I think it's going to be really cheap because it basically got a free uh, Master of Destruction. And I think that was, what, 50 points last edition? Yeah, we spoke about 50-odd 50, 50 points. I mean, that's uh, like a, that's pretty a much free. Upgrade. free. <laughs> that's a free upgrade for, 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 yep. for nothing. Um, as well as, you know, um, all the Warriors characters got plus one discipline. Yep. Yep. So, um, it doesn't have any of those new standards on there, but you'll see that in the next list. Yes. Yes, you will. Alex, anything else? I mean, well, the double Doom Lord just sounds better, doesn't it? So he should definitely have had another one. He's also going to be drowning in Veil Token with nothing <laughs> to spend. Oh, um... He doesn't have Veil Walker, but he has the Ledger. Yep. And he's got the Evocation, so... Yep. He, so... He's going to have all the Veil Tokens he wants, and they're going to sit in a little pile there for him. And he's going <laughs> to... I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do with them. He's not enough spells, right? I think that's the thing. He's not got the four well, spells, that's not enough. Yeah. He's, he's going to run out of spells to cast. He's going to have too many dice. He's going to throw away Veil Tokens. He <laughs> <laughs> he's going to throw I'm wondering where He's going to throw them at you. <laughs> Scotty probably will. After he punishes you with the rolling. No, I think, um, I mean, yeah, Double Doom would be nice, but the Entropic Aura could be interesting. He's going to throw that into enemy characters, obviously, or enemy bus. And there, there are, you know, there are a few interesting characters that you're going to see. So I, I do like Entropic Aura. I'm pretty sure, and... if I'm right, Entropic Aura shuts down armor as well, right? Yep. Yep. So I'm not, I don't quite understand why. I mean, I understand why he's got Immortal Gauntlets, because he's got to find a way to spend those Veil tokens. Yep. But I mean, usually what Immortal Gauntlets give you, either Divine Attacks, Flaming Attacks, or Magical mm -hmm. Attacks. Yep. Right? And I'm like, but you've got Entropic Aura. They're not going to really have armor, and that's, you know, where, where people usually get their regen save or their ward save. So I, I don't I don't quite understand. Well, I just hope that he gets to fight some vampires because the vampires, are, that's innate, so he's going to need it. Um, but, yeah, against everything else, you're right. Um, good point. All right. Let's move on we'll to, go the to the next list. Okay, so... Max, Warriors of the Dark Gods, has sent this in at 12.01, as Hugo's told me, so he's going to get a, a bit of a penalty. Hugo will tell you about that later. He's got, he's got an interesting list. Obviously, looking at the new edition and wanting to whack together something. something. He's gone with two characters, very expensive characters. He's got mm -hmm. the Chosen Lord on the Chimera with the new standard. He's got Gluttony, Idol Spite, Paired Weapons, Symbol of Slaughter, so he's got, I think he's got eight attacks, eight think, strength, five attacks. Um, uh, five base, paired weapon six, symbol of Slaughter goes to eight. To eight, and yep. He's got the uh, idol of spite for the uh, one use only, yes. plus one attack, plus one strength, plus one AP, I believe. Fantastic. Yeah, no, love that combo. Mm -hmm. um, he's got Basalt Infusion, Talisman of Shielding for a bit of protection, and he also has those Immortal Gauntlets, as we're going to see. Drowning in Veil Tokens in the last list. Alex, what is this one going to be? It's, it's, under, a, it's under a waterfall. He's still channeling three, so yep. he's doing all right. Um, so he's drowning, what, but he's, no. he's, yep. he's knee-deep knee deep in Veil Tokens. So there's a Sorcerer on a Battle Shrine who's a Master. Of course, he's got the paired weapons in the Hero's Heart because you need some way to make him fight. Mm -hmm. um, he's got the Gladiator Spirit for a bit of um, armor buff and power, and he's that talisman of the void so yeah battle shrines had a bit of love recently um but this character does end up being 800 odd points and he's, he's an alchemy master that's gonna have <laughs> wrath of god so, <laughs> can't get much much better than that. 
cards. Why, why, why do you buy, buy the Battle Shrine if not for Wrath of Gods, right? Yeah. Uh, your favourite, not mine. God, I hate that spell. Okay. Um, so in the core, he's filling out the core with 25 warriors, full command and legion banner, which is, I guess, the bus for the shrine? Yeah, because uh, he's, be, he's definitely going to be drowning in those ranks. Because that battle shrine counts as eight models. So. Wow. That's a very, very big unit. That's a very long unit. That's actually um, a lot of static combat res, actually. So you get, because battle shrine's standard, yep. and then he's got the other standard, which is two, and then he's got legion banner, so that's three. Yeah. So that's four. So that's what's that? That's. Think yeah, what's that? Six? six? Yeah. No, that's a great start. Yeah. It's a great start. And they now have their reroll uh, re -roll break test, is it? Uh, reroll yeah. break test. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Fantastic. So mini BSB in there, which is great. Um, he's got, um, for the rest of the core, he's got 16 barbs and 15 barb. And he has two giants. With tribal war spears, which got a points decrease, so he's mm -hmm. got two barb units. Possibility of the giant being in there, mm -hmm. and ten chosen gluttony paired weapons, full command wasteland torch. Bit of a different build to what we used to see, um, but they're chosen, and mm -hmm. you know they they do chosen things. And he has three chimeras because why not? Because according to him, uh, Sam told him they were really good chaff. So now he's doing three chimeras instead of the flayers that we saw from uh, Scotty. They're cheaper than, much cheaper than chariots now. 25 points cheaper than chariots. Mm -hmm. Four plus armor. Five attack, strength five. Yep. Yeah, pretty interesting. Any um, any other thoughts on this list? I've, I've got to say, I've played against the uh, giant in Barbarians lists before. Mm -hmm. And while I think they're probably the coolest thing in the game, they are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> And, Straight up terrible. And in this update, they have gotten worse because once a couple of those barbarians die, they're going to be panicking on discipline seven with no BSB. Oh, uh, they do. They do get a. Do they get? A, they get battle fever. They do get battle fever. Is that reroll something? I think that's reroll ones to charge. Oh, that's been no. That's been changed. That's been changed. They do get a bit of a leadership bonus there. Oh. Oh no, they, they do reroll panic tests. There you go. Reroll panic. panic there you go. Yep. Well, I helps a little bit. <laughs> it helps a little bit. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm just... not rating this list for Max. <laughs> basically, yeah. basically, Maxi, if you hear this, uh, Alex is just saying he's going to 20 you right now. He's, so, he's uh... starting in the hole. <laughs> he's, it's like he's wearing a, a scuba suit to climb in the <laughs> Is what I think. Um, right. This is very, this is very fitting. This matchup needs to happen. Alex, your list is actually coming up next. Go. So oh yes, this is we're gonna, time. we're gonna see how, how you think this matches oh, up. Max so will, um, will destroy me. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! So it's a crap list, but it'll destroy you. Oh, okay, yep. okay, okay. I'm covering all my bases. Oh. <laughs> all all right, right. Do you want to uh, go through your list? Yeah, Alex, sure. take it away. I've got the, uh, the shaman, shaman who uh, can fight a bit cheeky potion of strength in there to kill some chimeras. <laughs> uh, but, uh, Tailoring. A tanky mammoth hunter, uh, a fighting 18-inch BSB, mm -hmm. uh, some tribesmen, some bruiser darts, the mighty yetis, some tigers, uh, two of bombardiers, and a rocker rock, and a frost mm. So uh, there's nothing fancy about it. Oh, really? I think the yetis are pretty fancy. Well, yeah, that's, uh, I can start out in your, in your deployment zone, I guess. <laughs> that's, that's, pretty good. Uh, that's pretty good. But beyond that, it's just, it's a standard fare for ogres these days. <laughs> yep. No, 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 no real fancy going on. I've seen double rocker rock, is that a thing? I think it is. Yeah. I like the, the mammoth, lets you be able to actually hit elves before you die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, as anyone who's played against my ogres know, I'll just fail all my charges and then. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you so, brought the Swiss Stride banner so you can well, fail yeah. it more spectac yeah. spectacularly. Last time I played my ogres mm -hmm. down on, at your place, it actually was Hugo. I played against Henry, mm -hmm. and I made six charges in one turn and, and made one of them. <laughs> so, how far are these charges? Oh, like sevens. <laughs> That's, that's oh, what happened in gosh. that thing. I still oh, turn around and smash Henry. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I tell you what, 
the Kin Eaters and Bush far better than Wild Horns do. That's all I have to say about that. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, uh, the, we're hoping Matt, you're going to be playing Max then and see how this actually works out. Oh, I, I hope I don't, but now. <laughs> I've, I've backed myself into a hole. Yep. <laughs> Maybe I'll see Max in there. Okay. Uh, it'd, be, it'd, it'd be really interesting. Really interesting. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't see it being like an obvious like loss to you, Alex. But, All my uh, things to feel chosen with. Yeah. yeah. Bomb with you. Rock or Oryx. Rock or Oryx. Just charge him and then they'll die. Impact hits. Yeah. Impact hits. He'll do it. He's only got like 20 wounds there. You, you can do it. Easy. Easy. Easy, Easy game. All right, let's move on. Uh, All right. The next list we have is the Orcs and Goblin list by Simon Turner. Uh, I think this is an adaptation of his Melbourne list. Because uh, he played something very similar to here, and long story short, it's got a lot of orcs. Uh, you're looking at five units of fifteen iron orcs, so that's that's seventy five. Uh, then he's got about eighty ferals, four units of twenty, so that's what one hundred and fifty five. Mm-hmm. And then he's got forty four units of ten nashes, so that's what. Did you say 44 months? units? Sorry, I mean, a lot of four units, units of 10. Four units of 10. That, that's an army. That's that's a real army. That's a real 44 army. units. <laughs> so we're at 195 models. Count the teeth. Count the teeth. 195 <laughs> models. Then he's got four screwers. So, and then he's got three characters. So that's 202 models. 202 models. And no, go- and no goblin core. And no goblins. No uh, goblin core. Yeah, he's got some. You were talking about his magic. Do you want to talk about his magic a little bit? Uh, yeah. So he's he's definitely going to be. I think he's shoulder deep, right, Alex? Do you think shoulder deep I, in? He in he will be unable to wade through those spell tokens. <laughs> yeah, but he's got spells. Yeah, at least, spells. Yeah, at least he spells. has spells to cast to use them. Yeah. So this one's this one's this one's. Uh, we think this is an improvement on the Scotty list, because uh, he's got he's got a shamanism wizard master, so that's four spells. And he's got a witch doctor adept in witchcraft. So that's six spells. So, and he's got basically the three channels, and then he's got skull fetish. And skull fetish is for every unit he has in close combat, he gets a veil token. And for every one of his units that are fleeing, he loses a veil token. Mm-hmm. And just straight off the bat, uh, Simon's got a lot of units. His, Simon his has, units also cannot flee. Yeah, and they also cannot flee. Unless they're going to combat. Yeah, but Which I think four um, of them just blow up instead. Yeah, so Nashes don't flee from combat; they just die. Uh, and I don't think Ironorks really lose combats. Not very often. Not very often, and I think it's also good because the low model count means that if you win that combat, you probably killed them. And there's another unit ready to ready yeah, to hold ready you up to go in to go into the breach. Yep. Uh, he's got the triple Relentless Company banners on the ferals, which is pretty cool. Yep. That's an improvement, right, Alex, from the bow? Yeah, yeah I, I played the, the former iteration of this list. Yep. And, uh, yeah, those banner are Relentless Company. If your name's Ian, you don't want to be coming up against this. <laughs> uh, spoiler. All right. Spoiler. All right. Yeah, um, let's move on. Awesome. And it's the food monster. Acta is bringing... His VC, as he has been for the last few months, he's been um, using his VC. He's got his Vampire Count General. It's a Strigoi list. You've probably seen it before. He's got the the um, Ghoul Lord with the Halberd Hypnotic Pendant, Necromantic Staffs for a bit more magic buffs there, as they can only be adepts. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got a Courtier who's the bestial bulk, so he's a he's bulky as he's in the uh, Gas, big unit of Gas. Um, and he's just an apprentice, so he's looking at four spells, I think. He's looking at four spells. He does have Talisman of the Void. You know, he's got enough magic there uh, to five. buff. Five spells. He's got five. So he's got Necromantic. Ten Arise, a Necromantic yep. staff, that's two bounds, yep. and then he's got three spells. Yep. He's got three, absolutely. I forgot about Arise. Yep. Um, 40 ghouls with a champion, 34 zombies with a musician, and then he's got two units of eight dogs to fill up the core. Yep. He's got a cadaver wagon to buff that big unit of ghouls and ghasts. And he's got two units of seven vampiric spawns, which I know he's been using for a long 
um, and they're just, you know, really good at doing what the rest of the army can't. Yep, they're really fast and they hit really hard. Fantastic. Fly up the flanks, do all the good stuff. Yep, this, this tournament's won, I think it's won quite a few. I think quite a few. This times. army's won, yeah, it's it's won Vic GT? I'm sure it's won a Wyong, right? It's won a Wyong, I, definitely. I think it would have won a Wyong as well, yeah. Um, Wyong, for people that don't know, is the tournament that's pretty regular for us. We go up there every well, two two months or so, and um, yeah, we get about fifteen to twenty players, and acts usually there. Yep. Um, usually wins or Mister T wins. Yep. Or somehow Max, somehow Max wins. <laughs> somehow Max wins. Some form of rift in time where Max. Wins. <laughs> <laughs> he is he is the king. He's going to be defending uh, coming up in April. But um, yep. yeah, actors um very dangerous. The list is very dangerous. Minimal changes from last time, I think. I think no changes. And, yeah, no changes. Yeah. It's not broke. Don't it's, not broke. <laughs> no. uh, it's definitely broke. It's definitely it does. Broke. It does break things. Um, no, <laughs> very, very solid. Unless you've got f lots of flaming, you know. Yeah. Where, where is our flaming meta? As well. where, where is our flaming meta? I, I think it's coming up next. The is it flaming coming up next. No, no. But I mean, like, I, look, we've looked at how many of this so far, and like, there's. The, Combat flaming, flaming, combat flaming. Look, we got those immortal gauntlets with their raining veil tokens. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So we'll move on to the uh, to the flaming meta. The flaming meta. So we've got the infernal doors from Matt Stanley. He has been playing them for a little bit now. He's a big fan of blunderbusses, just to warn everybody. Um, he's got a prophet engineer wizard master with. Essence of the Free Mind, so he's going to either be picking from Alchemy or Pyromancy. He's got the Shield. He's got the Heat Haze because he is on a Temple Lama suit, so he's going to be flying about. Um, he's got a bit of protection from um, because of that Heat Haze, which is a nice little item. Only 40 points, and it gives you a hard target. And I think, is it 4 up against shooting until yeah. you lose a wound? Yeah, so it's, it's, an, it's an interesting delight. Um, Vizier, he's got the BSB with the Flaming Standard. And a relentless company blunderbuss great weapon and talisman of the void which goes in a big unit of 30 infernal dwarves infernal warriors with great weapons and blunderbusses yep. um so he's got a really good march and fire threat range um i think we worked it out it was 15 plus 10 25 yep. in oh, range if, range if you don't count him ravenswing though. yes and ravenswing as well yep. um from the Temple Armasu, yes, yep. that's where it comes from. Um, he's also got some backstabbers. We've only got some goblins, and we've already passed an orc list. Um, <laughs> so thirty-nine hobgoblins with backstabbers. They're, they're they combat. get to stab some um, couple of units of wolf riders, five Tareks, just a little unit there with um, the shields and infernal weapons combo. Yep. And he's got now we've got the big stuff. The big he's stuff. got the Titan Mortar. He's got the double volcano cannon just to just to cook some ghouls, hopefully. Um, and then he's got the Kundim Titan and the Infernal Engine with Steam Hammers. So that's where his real close combat punch is going to be coming from. What do you guys reckon? Uh, it's pretty scary. Uh, I played this last week with my demon list that we'll see later on, and he basically 20 me. Uh, yeah. Wow. Was it the, the shooting? What was it? It's just everything. It's just everything. <laughs> it's just too much. It's too much of everything. Like, it's weird. It doesn't look like it's too much of everything, but, like, the magic is very strong, and, you know, like, I'm giving him two veil tokens as well. So, yeah, he was, like, waist high, waist deep in veil tokens as well. Uh... Seems to be the way of things. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be the way of things. Um, yeah, like, it's it's... Weird, like the Kadim and the Infernal Engine, they they control a lot of space, so it's really hard to really rush, like rush Stanley's list. Mm -hmm. And let's say you rush it, the the blunderbusses usually will clean up everything, unless you've got like a really good armor save, like they will just they will just kill everything. Because you gotta understand the blunderbusses, uh, depending on how many models he has. Usually it's four ranks. Uh, each hit he does counts as two. So one phase of shooting uh, basically just killed off all 
my big unit of Lemuers, they did about 20 wounds. And they just evaporated. Because you got to understand... Um, All of them, though? Because hmm? It's almost, the, it's almost the prime target for him, though, because they are strength 5 AP 0, so if you've got some decent armor. Yeah, and then the other thing he's also got is the flaming started in it, so you make the Vernalus yep. flaming, and then that really synergizes well with the hereditary spell for the Inferno Dwarves. So you kind of have to juggle some threats between the Raven's Wing, as well as the hereditary spell, as well as all the other pyromancy spells he's going to put on you if he gets the hereditary spell through. So... Wow. And yep. um, I kind of told him to take the... Uh, what's that spell? It's the one where you can't shoot, uh, as well as Neg 2 to cast. for the uh, a Twisted <laughs> Effigy? Twisted Effigy for the Lamasu. And yeah, those, the combination of those three spells just really shut down anything I could do. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So you ran into a bit of a... Um, you ran into a bit of a blender. Uh, I would call it more a firing squad. <laughs> firing squad. <laughs> into the firing squad. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, that Infernal Engine and Kadeem Titan, they're pretty nasty. Tough, uh, Resilience 6, Resilience 7, so oh, yeah. you're right. They're very hard to take down unless you're bringing something specialized to take it out. Yep. I don't, I don't think uh, do you want to play against this, Alec? I think the Yetis could do pretty well here. <laughs> you think the Yetis, the Yetis will Yetis do really well? well. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I think those Infernal Warriors will just blow away your... The Blood of Us will just blow away your Yetis. Hey, if they're shooting the Yetis, they're not shooting it. <laughs> uh, uh, good point. Good point. Uh, I don't know. That's a, yeah, no, there's a big vote of confidence from that list there. Yep. Uh, All right. Um, Alex, is, Alex is also saying that he's going to win this one, I think. <laughs> so that's something else to look, look out for. If you don't have confidence, you've already lost. <laughs> yeah, but you can feign, like, you know, fake. You can choose to be, like, not confident, and you can fake it. No, I... I'm not a liar. But you can't hide behind a wall of that. <laughs> no, I can't. No, you can't. <laughs> um, okay, so let's... The the next person that you've already said you're going to smash um, is Henry. <laughs> Henry's so, brought along the druid on a dragon. Um, yeah, so this the is random cool. law, Hugo. Why is, why is there a random law? So um, there, in this tournament, there was a little stipulation where like, if you made a mistake on your army list, the very common one is not putting down what law of magic your wizards are using, <laughs> then I will just basically come up to your table every round and just roll for you and be like, oh, you're playing with this today. Um, and to and clarify, it is from the laws that he is allowed well, to have. From the laws anyway. from the DK. Right. So it's basically his wizard master can pick between shamanism, cosmology, and druidism. So it's one of the three that I'm going to be rolling, not all, all the laws. Uh, and Henry saw that and he's like, you know what? I'm going to try and game the system. <laughs> <laughs> he, he thinks some matchups, some laws are going to be better, and he's just going to hope to. I don't know. I don't know. What, what do Silver Elves pray to? The tree? The, the eternal tree? Oh, I don't Something know right like now. That, but, you know, I roll well. They used to pray to a few different things. I don't know what they do right now. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah. Um... so, yeah, he's rocking the, the Dragon Mage, Wizard Master, uh, with Pair Weapons Hero Heart, which is which is pretty good. It's, it's just three strength, five attacks, but plus one hit. You know, it just adds to the dragon, makes it a bit more combat-y. Uh, then yep. he's got something, the, for, the Forest Prince on the Great Elk, which is really combat -y. I think on the charge, you're looking at something like, I think it's something like six attacks. Six attacks at strength, I think, eight. With about uh, eight yeah, eight. yep, I that sounds right. Strength eight. eight. Yep, AP four is right as well. Yeah, something ridiculous like that. And... Like, as well as battle focus as well, like, it's it's just going to really hurt you. If it charges you, it's really going to hurt you. And it's got a really good save for an elf, too. Yeah, it's a 2-up, 4-up, because he's got nice. the Death Cheater, which is pretty good. Uh, he's also got the Thicket Shepherd with the Battle Standard. That's pretty standard. Uh, the two units, 12 Dryads, also pretty good. Fearless, fearless scoring units is always good. Mm -hmm. uh, then he's got the two units of Heath Riders, and they're Heath Hunters, so they're the ones with the longbows. So basically, they're just going to... They're either just going to be chaff, or they're going to just run around the flanks and just start plinking arrows at you. The uh, uh, Prince will probably be in one of those and then shoot out? I don't think so. I don't no? think so. I don't think so, because it... 
the prince can't really hide in there because um, the prince is not standard size, I believe. I think it's large. So he's not going to be able to hide in there. And he might want to flee with them. Hmm. So, All right, keep going. I don't think so. But but who knows? It's Henry. He's, he's already playing a random law. He can play this like a random way as well. So yeah, the Great Elk is standard. Yeah, it is standard. I was just standard. looking at that. Yep. So he can hide him in the fire right. about. Maybe he's gonna maybe he's gonna do it then. Uh, then he's he's, he's gonna be tough as in combat. So he, yeah, hide him from that shooting. Yeah. Uh, then he's got the two two times four thicket beasts, which are pretty standard as well because thicket beasts are just amazing because they're strength five, resilience five. They're just amazing, and then they're stubborn in a forest. <sighs> And bodyguard for the shepherd, of course. Yeah, so one unit's gonna have bodyguard shepherd, and the other unit's just I don't know. Gonna be in the yeah. forest. Yeah, so it's like kind of like you don't really need if as long as they're in the forest, they don't really need the bodyguard because they're already gonna be stubborn. So yep. they get like they get two bites of the cherry. Uh, and then the five kestrel knights with the shield champion standard as well as the banner of deception. I know you're a big fan of these guys. So uh, yeah, I I think this unit can win games by itself, because uh, the battle reception basically lets you redeploy the unit after everyone's deployed. So he could just throw them down on the left flank, and then you go, all right, well, I'm gonna put something on the left on my right flank to counter it, and then at the after deployment he goes, oh, you don't have anything on your left flank, so I'm just gonna pick up this whole unit and just put it on my right flank and. Now I'm just going to race down your back lines because you've got nothing there to stop me. And so, they're pretty they're pretty fighty. They're um they're pretty decent on the charge. Yeah. Yeah, they're also pretty decent on the charge. And look, whatever and because of fly and their movement, like whatever Henry's gonna charge with them, he's probably gonna win that fight. Yeah. Like he, he has all the targets he can pick from. Uh, so I'm I'm quite interested in seeing this unit basically just win games by itself. That's that's what I'm thinking. Um, and then the unless they fight Yetis. Well, then they're not going to be near the Yetis. The Yetis can't do everything. They can't be everywhere. <laughs> huh? Uh, that's all. Right. I think the 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 Yetis are now gonna they're just gonna fail hard. The Yetis are crying in the corner right. <laughs> The Kestrel yeah. Knights seem like the Swiss Army knife. It's never a good time when this is the worst of the Wizards on Dragon. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> there is another wizard coming up on a dragon that we're, we're quite a fan of. He's seen yeah. a few of him around. Yeah, um, yeah so good luck to uh, Henry. I hope he smashes Alex. <laughs> but also, he is, is immaculate. I don't know if it's painted or not, but his models all look superb. Yeah, so he'll definitely have the best looking, the best looking models. Definitely the best looking models. Um, Henry's definitely the master of what did you say? The hobby knife and <laughs> the hobby knife and a pair of clippers. Yeah, he's created some awesome creations. It'd be great to see his, his dragon and his. I haven't seen his forest prince yet. Have you seen his forest prince? Oh, the forest prince is amazing. It's amazing. It's, um, it's... Oh, we're gonna have to get some photos and down uh, the Kestrel Knights as well. I think you said they'll be some pretty impressive modeling. Yeah, the Kestrel Knights. Yeah, yeah, they're like um, they're like riding eels. <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, no, nah, it does some amazing stuff. We'd we'll have, have to get some photos of it. Um, all right, we're ready to go into Ian's list. very fun list. And um, does Alex? Doug guest Alex? Do you want to take over this since you are? Uh, the best empire master player. empire player. Yeah, I think I think Ian is a liar in calling this a fun, <laughs> but that's not to say it's not a good list. He he essentially has an immovable block of imperial guard with <laughs> carry and distracting, <laughs> where and they'll have battle focus. They have a character in their prelate with the locket, so you can't kill them with a big character. Nope. Uh, then he has five Knights to the sun griffin, mm -hmm. and then shooting. <laughs> he. He has what is it like? Just a bit 60, of shooting. Just a bit of shooting. Sixty-four crossbowmen or something like. That. Twenty handgunners, a mortar, a volley gun, and a steam tank, uh, along with his alchemy or pyromancy wizard master. Just a bit of wow. shooting. Wow. Just a bit. Uh, he is. He's channeling four. So he's knee deep in health <laughs> organs. Uh, with plenty of spells to use them though. Plenty of spells. Plenty for of spells. 
think he's got four bound spells and four regular spells, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so he's he's definitely gonna be spending so, uh, them all. If you're an elf, you don't wanna you don't wanna see this list across the table from you. <laughs> if you're an ogre, you don't particularly wanna see this list across the table from you. Uh, if you're a Yeti though, you might be... <laughs> Yeti. <laughs> yeah? What if you're a Yeti? You might be in with a shot. There's a chance. <laughs> oh, <laughs> goodness. There's a chance. You're just gonna be on the you're just gonna be on the right side of that steam tank. Just, you just you just yeah. Just don't want to be. Just don't want to vanguard into that steam bank. That's what you don't want. But uh, that is it is a solid gun line. <laughs> yeah. It it just it just is. <laughs> He's only got two orders to throw out, but that could be enough. Well, oh, that's more than enough. Deployment. He might actually run out of room for all those units of crossbow. Are you yeah, in the that. range of the Imperial Guard? Well, that's that's uh, that depends on how many hills we bring, right? I, I guess. <laughs> but I, 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 I two think hills. Might be better off to trade one of those units of crossbowmen in for a unit of twenty-one spearmen for another parent unit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Uh, then he'd be able to split his shooting. They don't we'd all have to huddle around the, to be able to fight in their three ranks. Uh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Good observation. Do when you fight this, do you just? What do you do about that guard unit? Uh, you stay away from it. Nothing. Yeah. Stay away. Yeah. Kill everything yeah. else if you they can. Have three plus saves. They can be strength five. They have distracting. Yep. They have parry. Yep, and they have a three up save. Yeah. Yeah. And they're probably going to have battle focus, and they're going to have rerolls to hit. Oh yeah. And oh, they have yeah. three different ways to get rerolls to. Wow. Yeah. And rending banner. And rending yeah. banner. And rending banner. Scary stuff. Definitely. Scary stuff. Who do you who do you think wins out this unit or the uh the Kingdom of Equitane, um is it the Forlorn? The Forlorn. Well oh, the the thing about the Forlorn is they don't need any support from characters. It's ah. the characters that make the Imperial Yes. Yes, that's true. So if you if you're able to snap out some of the characters, the the guard do kind of drop in terms of efficiency. His uh, his wizard is on the arcane engine. It is quite. It has no, no aegis save or anything to speak of. Yep, yep no aegis. A four plus save, I think, and that's it. Uh, six. I think it's three up because he's got alchemist alloy. Oh, oh um, yeah. They, so, but that that's it. Yeah, that's it. So that's the only chink in the armor, basically. Yep. Yeah. Just need some prep on some cheeky panic tests. Here. Oh yeah, yeah. Ian is uh, Ian is a uh, so just a public service announcement. Uh, Ian fails panic tests. Ian really fails panic tests. So if you can chain him up, he could think of play everything <laughs> off the board. Because that's just how Ian loses games by you just killing something dumb and his army just running off the board. Yikes. Yep. Well, as a He's just planning on causing all star his opponents, I'm guessing. Mm. So he's not going to take too many. I'm guessing that's what will be happening most of the time, because that is a bucket load of shooting. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right, let's... That's scary st- all right, um, Hugo, do you want to take this one? Uh, sure. Okay, so this is uh, Nick Howe's uh, Kingdom of Ecotate Army. Uh, it's definitely tried and tested, and I am... I'm a bit of a fan of it because it, it looks good to me. So basically he has the Duke on Hippogriff that kills everything on the charge because he's got Virtue of Might. So every no, wound he does on the charge, he gets another attack. He gets a real asshole. Yeah. Uh, he's got the lads that does, I think it's D3 plus 1 wounds. Am I correct, Alex? D3 plus 1? That, that is. That it is, is D3 plus yep. 1. It's the um, cannon. It's the cannon. And then he's also got Fortress of Faith, so he's going to be re-rolling ones to hit and ones to wound as well as ones to arm save. Uh, so yeah, you're looking at if, him. If you're an ogre player, you don't <laughs> want to see that guy. I know from experience. <laughs> so yes, if you're an ogre player, he's probably gonna hit you on twos. Yeah, if you're uh, he will kill your whole army. And I've, I've seen it several times. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then he's also got Questing Oath on it, so if you cause fear, he's going to get plus two movement to charge you, so it's going to be move ten on the Hippogriff and fly. 
Uh, he also gets plus one hit, but I think that's just that's just uh, that's just that's just rude. Like that's just unnecessary. It's just disgusting. That's just disgusting. But hitting, hitting on twos, re-rolling ones is just yeah. And then rolling okay. to wound on twos, you know, re-rolling ones. Yeah, he's only strength seven. He's, he's only strength seven. Yeah, 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 don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Strength seven. Strength seven. Strength something. Nothing. Nothing relevant at all. Uh, and then next up, he's got his BSP Paladin, and it's got Piety, Virtue of Piety. So uh, that gives, I believe he's going in the Questing Knights, because he's got Questing Open. That just gives that unit uh, plus one to their ward save, to a cap of four, I believe. Uh, and then he's got two damsels, both adepts, one in Divination, one with Druidism, and of course the one with Divination has the Book of Arcane Mastery for that sweet, sweet, easy cast bubble with the plus two. And, uh, yeah, what the other one's got Tales of the Void, so that's, what, three channels. Uh, Here is my, uh, my public yes, service Yes, Alex, go with, yes, Alex. If you see anyone, this is the first Druidism we've come across today, if you see anyone casting Oaken Throne, dispel it immediately. Don't think, oh, it's not so bad, and, uh, you know, you'll take your dice. No. Dispel it straight away. Use five dice. Doesn't dispel Oaken Throne. So you need to do. So you need to do, right? It is. All right. Just maybe, do it. Maybe we can put it in the shirt one day. Spell like a throat. That's good. I hope uh, so. I'll probably still forget. <laughs> I'll just stop summer growth. It's okay. No. No. Yeah. You know, you know those those four grail knights you killed last turn. Yeah. Well, now they're all back because you didn't just spell like a. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. But but you can kill the duke. That's the thing you gotta do. You can just one shot the Duke, and then it doesn't matter if he's got druidism. Then, then the game's easy. Then the game's easy. Yeah. Um, so otherwise, he's got the twelve knights of Rome with the Battle of Last Charge because that's just standard. And then the two units of five knight aspirants, uh, chaff, which is really good, as well as chaff clearance. Uh, then he's got yep the Grail Bus nine with the Banner of Roland, so that's plus one to their ward save against range attacks. Uh, and then he's got eight questing knights with just the champions, just so I guess you don't pick out the paladin. Uh, and then, yep, yeah, two units of yeoman outriders, which are also really good chaff. One's got throwing weapons, one's got bows, and then he's got two scorpions. Uh, so another thing, those scorpions, they're actually cannons, basically. Uh, they sure are. They, they sure are, are. I think they also have six wounds. Yes, they do. They've got a lot of wounds. They, I think it's D3 plus 1, and then they've also got uh, Clipped Wings as well. So yeah, a Scorpion, so, oh. if I remember once upon a time, I played against Maxi, and a, Scor a Scorpion on the first turn just one-shotted the Chimera Lord, and he died. Yeah, you know what they'll be real good at killing? What? Those three Chimeras Max has. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't he have a lord on a, a lord on a manticore? Hmm? Yeah. He's got oh. a lord on a manticore. Oh, those yeah, you're right. You got D3 plus one and clipped Clip wings. wings for 120 points. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's that's not. I mean, and we've we've seen quite a few flying characters around. D3 plus one and clipped wings. Yep. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. No-brainer. This this list is sold as a rock. Yes, yeah, I think we'll be talking about it a bit later. What do you reckon? We probably will. Yeah. Probably will. Alright. Um, yeah, we'll talk yeah, about this I... list and other matchups later on. Yeah. Yeah. It's um nasty. Alrighty. Um so we're gonna hop over to Bailey. Now I got to play Bailey um in his first um new player, younger brother of Jack Blanche, Bailey Blanche, and um he's going all out and hailing Hydra. He's got his dread elves, nice and straightforward army, um, to kind of start him off. They fight He's brought some tough stuff, though. Um, he's got the Oracle on the Dragon, and this is the Dragon we were alluding to. He's kitted out. He's got Occultism. He's got Moraic's Reaping to, yes, rain down the things again. And, um, yeah, he's got the Familiar. He's got an Amulet of Spite to gain a die and lose a Magic die. So a lot of risk involved there. Yep. Um, and he's got the Cult Priest on foot with the uh, two up armor, Aether Icon, Obsidian Rock, so that's a MR3 combo there. Uh, Cult of Yemma, who's going to go in 28 dance as a Yemma, full command, Banner of Gar De Dekos, which is the plus one to wound. Yep. 
um, cores filled out with two Dark Raiders, two Spear units with Academy Banner, and he's going to finish off with the two Hydras and seven Dread Knights with the Banner of Blood and Full Command. So, um, solid unit of Dancers, a bit of everything else, Dragon, Hydras, yeah, nice and straightforward. And, um, yeah, I hope he, I hope he's been getting heaps of Keeps of practice in. It's one thing to learn your army, but when we play events, you learn so much about other armies as well, don't you? So, yep. um, yeah, it was great to play Bailey last time, and I hope to see him again. I won't see him here, but maybe up at Wyong next time. Alex, any any comments about I've, this? Uh, I've, I've played against that dragon quite mm. uh, it is It is quite good. Yeah, Nick uh, is however, sort, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. But uh, Bailey is missing out on good things to kill with his occultism. <laughs> Good things to stab at the back. Oh, uh, sacrifice. Yeah. Yes, yes, he yes. Is, he's going to have to be killing spear. A big loss. But if he wants to cast more than two spells in a turn mm -hmm. and sacrifice something, mm -hmm. he is going to have to be killing Dark Raiders, Dancers, or Knights. Oh, yeah. He can do Hand of Glory without that, though, can't he? Get a five, five up ward without sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, for you, himself. Yeah, but you want to put that Hand of Glory on those Dancers for Oh, of course, the Dancers. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh... It's a good thing that his cult priest has made resist three because he is going to take a beating from magic. Mm -hmm. From yep, especially but... when he's got the amulet of spite as well. Yeah, the amulet of spite makes you have a really good magic phase, and it makes you get really hurt by magic. <laughs> Losing that dispel dice is bigger than gaining a power dice, I reckon. You reckon? But that's what you want. That's what you get. Yeah, yeah, like I looked at this list and I'm like, I think the big difference here is probably dropping Amulus Bite for Beastmaster's Lash would make a lot more sense since uh, Bailey is uh, running three monsters because Hell Hydra. Yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe that's maybe that's a change he'll make after the game because I think we've got we've we've got quite a lot. Of, he's still got quite a lot of infantry as well. So I think that will maximize the list more. But yeah, like Alex says, he needs he needs something to sacrifice that's relatively relatively cheap. All right. Um, now, funnily enough, uh, Jack, his brother, is also uh, Dreddy's, and he's got mm -hmm. something completely different. Hugo's going to talk about a few tricks in a moment. I'll just take you through it. Sure. Um, he has the Dread Prince, and if you haven't seen this point before, he's on the Pegasus with the transcendence lance and he's got the midnight cloak so he's going to do d3 wounds on the charge he can get up to strength eight so he really great little um model to kind of toss out and take out big things um, and threaten, the, and threaten just about... little brother trying, yes trying to nip at his feet. <laughs> <laughs> he is he is a little he's a little bit of a pest um I really, I really rate this guy. The only difference is this one's got a what a three up ward against uh, yeah. uh, range, three up yeah. ward against range. Yeah. So that'd probably protect you from that cannon, that uh, that cannon or that catapult that wants to squish you. Yep. Um, but it's still, it's still, it's you. still not as good as the hippo lord. Still not as game breaking. Not, not even close. <laughs> <laughs> not even close. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's uh, only got four attacks, not ten attacks. <laughs> <laughs> He's backed it up. He's a fleet commander. Um, he's got a captain BSB Beastmaster who's going to be on a Manticore with, with as much gear as he can get, basically. He's got Dragonfire Gem. He's got Talisman Shielding. So he's trying to protect him as best as he can. Yep. Um, so two flying characters. Um, and now we've got 10 Corsairs, 2 times 15 Spearmen, another unit of 15 blokes, just um, no Spears, 2 times 5 Raiders. Now he's got two Medusas with paired weapons, mm -hmm. and he's got two units of Acolytes, both with champs, one with Yemma, so that's going to get him his four spells, and, and three three Krakens. So um, it's a good fun stuff. Plenty of um, fast hitting stuff. Yep. Um, and a bit of everything else. So um, yeah, there's uh, I know there's a big trick with the um, Dread Prince Hugo. Do you want to tell everyone about that? Yeah, so when you buy a fleet commander, you can upgrade a unit of your Corsairs to Vanguard, but any characters with fleet commander that join the Corsairs will also automatically get Vanguard, as well as Assassins that join the unit. Uh, so what very likely is going to happen is that Dread Prince is going to join that unit of Corsairs for the first turn. 
He's going to vanguard that whole unit up 12, and then the Pegasus is just going to slingshot straight out. And so... Straight out. That's, I think that's 28 inches. So he's definitely going to be in your zone turn one. That's and, um, and, uh, pretty pretty fun. <clears throat> yeah, that's going to be yeah, that's going to be. A and you can't and you can't shoot him off once he's done that. Nope. Well, you can, but you have to get a bit lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the three up the three up uh, is pretty strong. The three up ward against range is pretty strong. Um, he's also got some pretty good spells. The two dark acolytes, the tunes of dark acolytes are pretty good in terms of the damage spells. As well yep. as you need to look out for the Medusas, because they've also got a bounce spell each. I know it really rarely does come into play. Yep. But they're That's both... Deceptive Glamour. Yeah. But Deceptive Glamour is actually a hex, so in an MSU list, it actually works quite well. Hmm. So he's going to definitely be putting in... It's, it's, it's just better than buffs, any buffs that you can possibly do. Um, yeah, and fantastic. you're looking at the Acolytes, I think he's probably going to go Ice and Fire for the first one. Ice and Fire and the Hereditary, and for the Yemo ones, it's definitely going to be Breath of Corruption, and I think it's Graves Call, so it's just a lot of uh, Magic Missiles. A lot of Magic Missiles that are going to be coming out of that unit. Yeah, fantastic, because he doesn't have um, uh, any shooting, really, does he? No. No. Not so that the uh, the uh, magic is definitely going to be there to do a bit of chaff clearance and a bit of everything else. Yep. We all know that uh, Jeff, but this is an extremely fragile army. Oh, I found yeah. that out the hard way when one, I was playing yeah. One yeah. One good magic phase for your opponent or a bit of shooting, and it's going to get rid of all of his magic. Mm. So those Dark Acolytes are target number one. Yep. yep. Do the Dark Acolytes have Vanguard? No, no, they do. No, not and they're not far. Or light troops. They still have light troops, I believe. Okay. It's just that yep, they yep. don't have the feign flight and stuff like that, so they can't flee yep. in. Yeah. They got scoring, but they yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, that'd be interesting to see. Yes, they are. To be. Um. Yeah, but this is definitely more like classic dread elves, I think. Yeah. Like it's it's kind of like a it's very like, it's like a scalpel. So he's got to play this actually really well as well. There's a lot of movement that he has to get right. It's just got a little <laughs> bit of tricks. So yeah, I think it's what kind of how dark elves should look, dread elves should look like. All right. Um, All right. now something a little bit different, just a little bit different. <laughs> um, a lot shorter, a lot more armor. Um, and a lot more shooting. Bringing along his um dwarven holds. He's got one character. Just one. Runic Smith, General, Rune of Devouring, Shield. What else do you want? Um, it's all you need for a dwarf. Gonna, he's going to eat a spell. And, yeah. Yeah. He's going to eat a spell. Um, yeah. A whole bunch, of, whole bunch of small units of dwarfs. So we've got 10 Greybeards with throwing weapons and shields. 15 Greybeards throwing weapons and shields. Then he's got two units of clan marksmen with the handguns. So four ups unless you're moving. Uh, two units of rangers with both with crag warden, so they're going to skirmish around. They've got crossbows and shields. Now he's got the big brick of old guardians, full command, rune extended of the holds, so they fight while they count as having three ranks they until you start the wood. Rank. For steadfast, yep. As, um, as well as disrupted. So it only takes. As well as for disrupted. Yeah, yep. so they only need three models to disrupt your ranks. Yep. So um, really tough. Uh, two units or two attack copters, really love that. Grudge Buster, Catapult, Runecrafted, Organ Gun, Runecrafted, and a Cannon. So those War Machine to back up all those other units. Um, so just, just and that combo of... shooting with the hmm? oh, Here just, you go. Yeah, 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 just double, just just to make sure that anybody that plays will. Uh, the Organ Gun is thirty inch range, not forty eight inch range. As he managed to cheat his way through uh, Castle Assault with. <laughs> Until he played an ex dwarf player or a dwarf player at the time and told him no. Yes, that was that yep. was basically telling him what. <laughs> but it was, it was very it's very forgivable. It's forgivable. It's will. Always we forgive. forgive will. We always forgive will. And um, I think he's got some cool cyborg models. You said that he's using. Yeah, yeah. So he's got the cyborg, uh, the steampunk dwarves, so the ones in the exosuits. Wow. Right? Yeah. Using them as the whole 
as the whole Guardians. Fantastic. So little space marine dwarves, basically. Yep. Um, holding the front line, yep. punching. Does he um tend to go for the uh, strength buff? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's Will. Will does things. You can never guess what Will's gonna do. Awesome. I can guess he's gonna make us laugh. He will make you <laughs> laugh. But how? How? See, this is the thing. It's wise. How is he gonna make you laugh? You could never guess. Love it. Pretty much looking at this list though, and thinking, oh, there's little units of dwarves. That's easy. Those little units of dwarves can be unbelievably annoying with their shield wall parry nonsense. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love it. Like, I'm pretty sure the rangers are just going to camp into some piece of terrain and just, like, take take advantage of being skirmisher and light troops and just be stubborn. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, love it. Now the dwarves are tough as nails. He's got some small unit sizes, though, I will say that. Uh, mm. But I'm um, sure we'll have a blast. And, um, yeah, lots of shooting. Shooting's always good, especially those attack copters and the grudge busters together. Getting quite a lot of those strength 5 shots in. Yeah, so that's what, 20? 20 strength 5 shots a turn? Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, 5 yeah. times 4. Yep. 5 times 4, yeah. Oof. Yeah, usually hitting on 5s, but you can fly pretty close with the attack copters and get in short range. Oh, and you got the like, uh, bombs as well? You know, so drop a little, drop a few bombs as well. Which I always, which I always forget. I always forget to drop the bombs. Um, yeah, no, I think, I think this is a really good list from Will. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. And, uh, it is Will playing, yeah. so we'll see how it goes. We'll see. Uh, Alright, so lucky last is my list. And Alex, I think you should go through this list because you are the best even player in Australia. I sure am. <laughs> Yeah, look, you've got two two omens sitting in a unit of Lemurs. What what else? What what else? You're a damn cheesy cheater, what? and it's going away soon. So you tell him. Oh yeah, it's going away for sure, for sure. The ability to take more than one omen. No, no, no you've the got ability to have more than one omen reason. in a unit. In a unit. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. Mm. So they'll have a special rule. Okay. Kind of like professional courtesy. Yes, the assassin's rule. Yeah, yep. kind of like that. All right. Yep. Uh, what yeah, else? You got, you got your two into brazen beast. Uh, you got the deceiver there to steal people's attacks. What are you? You getting five veil tokens each turn for you? Yeah. That's that's wasty at least. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. Yeah, you got you got two small units of lemurs to be scoring. You got yep. the Furies, and then you've got the Blazing Glories, just so you can sit there listening to Brian Adams. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what sounds more threatening: lemurs or lemurs. Lemurs. Uh, uh, lemurs <laughs> is such a long word to lemurs. say. I don't, uh, I don't know. It's all the same. Yeah, they're not, they're they're not threatening nails. at all. Anyway, they're not threatening. They're and just, it's, it's, it's a solid list. list. It's it, a solid it list. Is. It's a solid list. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is pretty similar to the one that you took the Vic GT and did pretty well with. Yeah, look, VGT, I put three omens in the list, and they all went in the same he's, unit. He's turned the cheese down a bit for this one. <laughs> he's turned it down a bit. I felt really bad. Yeah, it stank so much. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he just felt dirty for taking it the whole time. So you've you've yes. gone down to a deceiver instead. Yeah, I went down to a deceiver instead. I uh, it just gives me a good mix of spells. That's all. And I think yeah, the pretty and magic. Yep. Sometimes the deceiver just is a bit more stable, and then. I think fighting like ogres, for example, Whoa, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get so many attacks. No, you're gonna die to yetis. <laughs> uh, your yetis gonna give me so many attacks, man. I'm sorry, no, you... don't I go before your yetis? I go before your yetis, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. They are yetis. <laughs> if you yeah. haven't seen it, if you haven't seen it or fought against it, the Lemures with the chilling yawn is um. Uh, is it neg three agility to everyone in base contact? Yes, so is... you need to be agility ten. If you're not agility ten, I'm going before. Wow, you. agility. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's a nasty. Um, that's a nasty little boss there. Mm-hmm. They can they can hold up just about everything. Yep. Fight me, Alex. Fight me. Um, what f what is it? Uh, what do we got there to finish off? So we had the three units of Lemures in core, and then what do we have? We've got two. Two times four brazen beasts. Yep. Can we say anything more about brazen beasts? I uh, I originally took them. I started out with red haze. Mm -hmm. Then I switched over to whipcrack tail. Mm -hmm. 
And it's now like I'm, I'm on the incendiary icon as well. Oh, oh you see, so you're following me, right? <laughs> well, no, I, I had them for Vic GT on incendiary. Yep. Yeah, 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 but see, oh, I no, had... no, I didn't. No, I, I tell a lie. That's what made me change it because I played yeah. Pyronessy four out of five games. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, because they've got no armor, right? Huh? No, no armor whatsoever. None, zero. 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 Yeah, I think incendiary icon for us, there's so much Pyromancy going around. That's the best. Mm-hmm. That's what you can run them. Mm-hmm. I still don't know what you do with those blazing glories. Uh, they just died really a blazing glory. Happen. That's that's all they need to do. It's, it's, it's what it says on the box. Not a fan of those guys, Alex. I, I'm not. I think they're a bit too expensive. So they what? They're around three something. Is that yeah. right? Do you know? Do you know, do you know why? Forty. Yeah. Alex? Why, Hugo? Well, You're not using them properly. Why? You're meant to do something really dynamic with them. <laughs> You're meant to give them I mean, ridiculous no, I, odds. I haven't even used them. They they haven't made it to the table yet. Exactly. That's why you don't you don't understand them. You gotta put them on the table first. Then you gotta like find the dumbest thing to do with them and go for it. And then you know to die to skinks. Yeah, but the hey. Hey, that's what it that's what they're meant to do. Die in a blazing <laughs> glory. Dana, Dana, please. Uh, that's exactly what the uh, that's exactly what the background team were thinking. Uh, yep, that's exactly. Uh, what they're, they're, they're interesting. Yep, um, they don't do it. You've probably won. Yeah. but you weren't meant to win, so you win either way. So how yeah, they've got doing? lots of cho- they've got lots of um, upgrade choices, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they do actually. Yeah. They have quite a lot. The cloven um, the cloven hooves is 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 good. Yeah, it's just the D3 strength 5 AP2 impact hits. It's just, I think yep. it just works because otherwise they've really got five attacks and they're kind of like. Yeah, five attacks is. You know, bad roll and you get yeah. one wound. It's pretty, yeah, yeah. Right. They're not gigantic though, are they? So it's just a single stomp? Yeah, just a single stomp. Yeah. Just a single stomp. But All I, mean, right. I think, I think you're, you can agree with me, Alex, that demons have just an issue with armor. They do, yeah. Their armor or other people's armor? Uh, like breaking, other people. Breaking through armor. Other people's yeah. armor, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, like, yeah. I just think they're just there good to just round out, because, again, they're AP5, so... Ah, uh, of course, yes. That is, that is that is one awesome little trick. Yep. And they are the only thing in your army that's really going to cut through the armor besides the omens, is that right? Or the brazen beasts on the charge? Uh, omens are only AP3. Uh, brazen beasts are AP2... Yeah, it's just all strength of AP2, so mm, okay. it's not good enough. Or you can beast cups with armor by just making people roll too many dice. <laughs> 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 too many armor saves. Yeah, yeah, you see, the, the, I think I think I think uh that doesn't work. I think that doesn't work. I think giving uh. your opponent a chance to roll dice is just a terrible idea. I, I completely <laughs> disagree with you on that. Maybe that'll be something for another episode. <laughs> okay, okay. Alrighty. Sure, we're gonna have a lot of conversations about demons in the no, future. I, I, don't worry. I think that one of the best things you can do in this game is make other people roll dice. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. I don't the know panic tests that we were alluding yeah. to. Earlier. All right. Um, I guess. I guess. Yeah, we'll, we'll get Alex back to, for a talk about demons maybe sometime soon. Yeah. Sure. I'll be here whenever you want. Alrighty. So let's move on to the most important part of the podcast: predictions. Whereas so, Alex, more shit talk part. <laughs> where, just, where the, Alex, just the Alex threatening more you, people. Alex tells you who he's going to beat, which is everybody, right, Alex? <laughs> uh, of course I am. I will. <laughs> I'll destroy everyone. <laughs> At all. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's be let's be a bit more sensible. All right, so who do you think? What's your like kind of like top three, or what do you think of like the the round three pairing is going to look like? Okay. I think. It's uh, it's hard to bet against, but I think there are some lists here and people that that might have their number. That might have their Ooh. number, you think? Yeah. So, uh, Stanley is my dark horse <laughs> with <laughs> those with and uh, and whatnot. I think he might be able to sneak in. Because he and always that, does that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's he's pretty good. He can get. A, a bit of luck going on. Uh, I think X, he might be an idiot, but that Equitane list is really <laughs> easy to play, <laughs> and it, it is no, re- just, it's just really good. You, so, you just, just got to charge and make those rolls, right? It's that yeah, easy, yeah. Like, yep. Yep. I, 
Yes, but that's nope. It's just that easy. <laughs> uh, it, it's a really good list, though. Like, there's no no real Yay. about it. Yeah. Uh, he could just roll over the top of a lot of people with that list. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then there's Ian is also in contention. I think with all that shooting. Yep. It can be a lot of it can be flaming with the aura for Empyromancy. All right. So all right, all right. So let's 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 do a little let's do a little rundown. So let's pretend the last round is, let's say it's going to be Activus Ian, and oh, I want to see Simon that. Simon against Nick. Who wins Ooh. the tournament? Oh, so they're all on equal points, and don't... sure, let's say they're all on equal I, points. I'd say that Nick would win. You say Nick was going to win the tournament if that's the if that's the final round pairings. Yes, <sighs> that that might do. Can kill a whole unit of Iron Orcs by himself. Wow. He can, yeah, he can just charge the, in. Yeah, he's got the attacks, yeah. Yeah, he, he, can, he, attacks, he kills yeah. one, turns around, kills the next one. Yep. Turns around, kills the next one. Yep. Uh, same with each unit of knights can kill a unit of orcs. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna... I'm I'm, I'm, hes- I'm hesitant with that. I'm gonna, with the, if he can get those skewers to shoot him at least for one round, I think he'll be really wary because he's gonna lose some wounds. Uh, yeah. It'd be, it'd, be, it'd be great. To, it'd be great to see. It's, yeah. You know, you know, think, nothing think, goes the way I it's think, always meant to go. Um, I think, I think Nick needs to do just ten wounds. So when he goes into the Black Hawks, he has to do ten wounds. So he'll hold them there. Uh, he got to do eleven. So there's four left. No, no, no. He wants to do ten. He so wants he him to stay there. He wants him to stay there. So he doesn't get shot off. So get oh, shot I get you. Okay. All I right. Think I think that's. I think that's the thing. And I'm thinking ten attacks, ten wounds is actually pretty doable. Yeah. Like. Oh, don't forget that the hippogriff. Oh, yeah, the hippogriff's got five attacks, attacks on charge, yeah. 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 Strength six. Yeah. It could be. It, yeah, it could. Uh... Could do it as well. I think that uh. Also, act mm-hmm. in in the other game. Mm-hmm. Could. But Although he's got some pretty fast. Like he's got some. He's got some fast units there as well, I guess. But yeah. Right. If Ian can slow him down. So, so if those are the top four, let's say, what do you think is the last, the final two? Do you think it's going to be the Stanley and Wharton, the, the two dark horses? Down, down the bottom tables. No, 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 no. As in, like, <laughs> as in, like, as in, like, you know how you, you know how you pair the rounds usually. Like, let's, like, usually there's like a top table, second table, and the third table. So the third table would be, yep. you think Matt Stanley versus Max Wharton? Oh no, yeah. Matt, Max is going to be down the bottom. Max is gonna be down at the bottom, but how is he the dark yeah. horse and win it? If he's the, the no, bottom? no, no, Matt. Matt. Matt is not Max. Oh, Matt. The only part of the dark horse is he gonna be is the hole that he's clawing himself out of. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's gonna put him down there with the blunderbusses. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Nah, that that'd be great. That'd be great. To see. I can't wait to see if um, yeah. if that success is gonna be duplicated with that blunderbuss unit and all. Oh, I feel um, the blunderbuss unit. It's just lots, lots, lots of fun. <laughs> Lots of fun for him, not so much for everyone else. My my I last mean... prediction is, mm-hmm. I think that the first are going to be super important. Ooh, I think there are a lot of lists here. That, disregarding people, there are a lot of lists that will beat a lot of other lists very easily. Okay, yeah. So, so you got so a, you a lot of rock paper scissors. So it comes out to the first round yeah. draw. Yeah, I think, I think that'll be very important. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, like the thing about one day tournaments is it's 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 really about your run. Because if you, you just need to play, you just need three good games. Whereas in a five and two day tournament, you kind of have to not only do well for three games, like you got to string five games together, and that's actually a lot harder, like a lot harder, because you don't get to like really dodge other matchups. Yeah, a bit of luck of the draw. Yep. All I know is that I'm going to play Scotty in the. Line. <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> that happens every tournament. That would yep. be a great game. All right. All right. We'll see what happens then. Um, so let's go to the... All right. So let's just go through what's happening uh, next. So after, hopefully, later in the week, everything goes ahead. And afterwards, we've got the War and Wild, the Ninth White War and Wild. Uh, and that will be on Sunday, the 14th of April, at Rebel at Her Post, uh, Wild New South Wales. 
uh, Alex is the tournament organizer, so if there's any information... Yeah, I'm, I'm picking up the reins for this one. Uh, Why are you picking up the reins, by the way? Just a little... I just thought Simon's drawn eight other ones. <laughs> so I thought... Give him a rest from doing it, and I'll I'll do it. I'm gonna live down the road from there. I'll, yeah, I was enough. definitely gonna be there. So it's an uh, it's an awesome it's an awesome little venue. If you if you are if you we do have a good group of um regular definitely um yep. great little event. Get three quick games in, have some pizza, chat with everyone, drive home. Yep. It's just a a great Saturday or a great Sunday as it's been. Yep. Um. Yeah. Awesome little venue. Sean's awesome. The um guy who runs it. And, um, well, Alex lives around the corner, so... Yep. Yep. Uh, and then after that, at the end of April, 27th and 28th of April, uh, we've got BrizCon, which will be held over at Brisbane, Queensland. Uh, so that's one of the two-day events. Uh, and then finally, we have uh, the big event of the year, Battle of the Vines, Biv. Uh, that's on the 4th and 5th of May, and that is going to be in Hamilton, New South Wales, and that is our one and only teen tournament event in Australia every year. Uh, it is great fun. amazing. Great fun. It's uh, it's great. It really is. I think if, um, you, uh, if you don't have enough people to, yep. to make a team of five, we can definitely find you a team. There are plenty of people in your situation that needs to form just teams of people. Yeah. And uh, you'll, you'll make some new friends. Come to any of these. Yeah. So it's going to be teams of five. And I think last year we had, I think we had two Merc teams. So two. Yeah, teams I, I, was, of... I was in one of them last year. Oh, you and they did really well. They, re they did really well. Did they? Yeah. yeah. They came, came third, didn't they? Came... That's only because I wasn't there, Chris. Victory points in the one round. <laughs> yeah, Hugo, Hugo um, left at the last minute. Okay. We called in a replacement. Um, the, the and, best replacement. <laughs> yes, he proceeded to get five points. Um, so yeah, we. It's yes. As bad as Dave. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we went. We went very enthused with you. So we'll yeah. give him a pass this time. So hopefully this it'll be back to normal. Looking for a team up with you. Go. No, we'll no, we've got, we've got a team. We've oh, got we've got team. one. Okay. No, I, def I defer yeah. that. In, I defer I, all I that. I think we have you. a team. I think oh, we have fantastic. a team. But like honestly, Teams like, is a bit different. Yeah. Teams is Teams is good. Like Teams is Teams is like literally like the only time like it's even it's even better than going to a singles event with your friends because like every round you will be yeah. with your friends and you will have to talk over a lot of things and make a lot of hard decisions. Or if you play one of the teams that just use a spinner so it's a kids' toy <laughs> to determine the matchups. Determine the yeah. matchups, then, then, then you're just lame. Like, but the whole matchup process is is is, a, is another game within can... a game. Yeah. Yeah, it's a game within a game. Gives you an excuse yeah. to talk about all the lists and try to strategize who on who and yeah, try and customize armies to fit certain builds. So it's oh, it's great fun. It's great Definitely. Fun. Um, it's a shame we only do it once a year, but we're hoping to get. Uh, 10 teams this year. I mean, we really need people to be signing up yeah. ASAP. I know we're going to be signing up this week or as soon as we can um, to kind of confirm those numbers. Yep. It's the more, more fun. Yep. Um, and then another thing, uh, look, I know that sometimes people get really nervous about tournaments or they think they think it's... Um... Alex, how would you put it? Boy, well, yeah. tournament just has that air about it like it's serious. Yeah. And, you know, you it's more like a, a day of organized games, really. Yeah. I, I've never seen anyone that's there to be there, like, oh, I'm here to win the prizes. Like that. Everyone's just there to have, have some games, see some friends you only get to see once every month or so. It's because we're not good enough, Alex. It's just because we're not good enough. Well, I mean, enough. you might not be. <laughs> oh, what have you won, Alex? What have you won? Two, you want to start best this? In race tokens. <laughs> I'm hanging on to it. It's it's all it's all a good fun. Oh, it's all yeah, a it's good a, fun. It's just they're just days of fun or a weekend of fun. That's that's what it's all about. Yeah. No, no one takes it too seriously. We take drinking seriously. The game, the game, yes. the game is secondary. So, some people take drinking more seriously than others. Yes. 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 Uh, some people enjoy the 
the uh, the intention of being carried home. Intentional <laughs> 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 BB. Uh, so BB is up in in Newcastle, along with um, Castle Assault being the two major events, along with uh, usually CanCon, but uh, it's Castle Assault and um, BB being the two major events. Definitely got a bit of um, history, those events. So got a great club up there. They always do a great job, and we always have tons of fun. So, um, yeah, you need any more info? Yeah, we throw down a little link at the bottom. If you want to see what's coming up, you can just click into the link, and it'll take you straight to the Wargamer AU events page. And you can just take a look yourself, and hopefully we'll, we'll see some new faces there. Yeah, fingers crossed. I know, well, we hope we'll still be having our... Um, travelers from Brisbane and Melbourne hopefully still coming. Awesome blokes coming from Brisbane um, for a lot of our big events. And um, yeah, so if you're in Brazil or Melbourne, just um, talk to us on Facebook and I'm sure we can get you in touch with some people. And um, yeah, Hugo, anything else you want to say? Alex, anything else you want to say before we finish up? Well, look, I've, I've never been a special guest anywhere before, but I would, <laughs> I would gladly be a special guest again. <laughs> We'll, 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 we'll get you for the demons. Definitely for the demons. We need you back there. <laughs> Unless you're not best demon player anymore. Ooh, it's not going to take a lot for that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed that you hold on to those. As, as... Yeah, otherwise uh, we're going we're gonna to have to get a new special guest if you don't hold on to those two. Yeah. yeah. Find I'll... another person. After all Thanks. the trash I've talked to Max today. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about now. <laughs> I look forward to those guys texting you in the morning going, what on earth is happening? This is a, <laughs> this is Alex is having a go at everyone, but it's been great entertainment. Thanks so much for coming on, Alex. No yeah, problem. Thank you so it's much, easy to Alex. do when they can't speak back to you. And, um, <laughs> um, yeah, we, to, um, talking about, uh, Biv, Warren Wyong, all the good stuff coming up and then starts to just, you know, talk about some fun topics as well. So we'll, let you guys know on the Facebook page and on Wargamer AU how we're going to do that. So um, from um, thank you very much from Chris, Alex, and Hugo. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys, and hopefully see you at an event soon. Bye. Bye. Oh.